Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take the footage from your DSLR and uh, encode it so that it's editable in Final Cut. So, um, basically I shot some stuff on here, and this is the memory card that I have. And I want to encode the files into something called Apple ProRes 422. Right, and so that file is a native file for Final Cut to recognize and you'll be able to edit and do all the stuff that you need to do in Final Cut. So, uh, this is similar to login transfer with uh, regular camcorders. I don't have mine right here, but uh, I have another video uh, that shows you how to log and transfer, but you can't do that with this necessarily because this doesn't record the video files into something called the AVCHD kind of format. Um, it's a file structure that's recognized by Blu-ray and whatnot. That's a whole another topic of conversation, but this just straight up records videos and places them as files in this structure here. Um, and we have to encode the videos uh, to Apple ProRes in order to bring them into Final Cut right because Final Cut won't do that right now not that I know of. I don't know I'm not a Final Cut Pro or anything but this is the way that I do okay so uh, we have the memory card that was in this camera and the important thing is before everything is that you should know what you shot your stuff in right so uh, this camera is capable of shooting at many different resolutions or actually just 1280 by 720 and 1920 by 1080 those are really the only two that you would care um, and so it shoots at different frame rates as well and those two things are very important the resolution and the frame rates um, it shoots this thing can shoot at 24 and 30 at a resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080 and then it can shoot in 60 frames which is a high frame rate at 1280 by 720 so I just happened to shoot in 1280 by 720 at 60 frames and so I have the card that was in this camera. It's in the computer now. And that this is the card right here. So here are the two folders that this camera makes. And under DCIM, you'll see 100 Canon. And here are the video files that I've done. And uh, the one that I just recently shot is this one here. And so I'm going to start a program up called MPEG Stream Clip. Right, so this is a great program to do batch encoding, meaning uh, you have like all those clips that you just saw there. I could do like a bunch of clips and encode them into the correct uh, codec for Apple uh, for Final Cut to edit. So uh, to do that, you start by going to list, and you want to make a batch list. And then what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop the video files. I'm just going to do one for now right and then I want to export to QuickTime I can also uh, join all the files if I wanted to and whatnot there's all kinds of different um, file formats to choose but we'll just do QuickTime for the sake of uh, Final Cut I'll press OK where do I want to save it to now this is kind of important uh, you're gonna want to save it to this place where your scratch discs are. Typically when you do a log and transfer it puts it in a Final Cut documents under render files right but I mean you could do that if you wanted to make a new folder or actually oh yeah new folder uh what was this video this was the uh Atrix, right? That's just my naming scheme. Is that I recorded something recently about the Motorola Atrix. I'm just calling it that. You don't have to call it that, right? So uh, I'll hit select. That's the folder I want to choose. So here are the options of encoding the video into the right format. And up under compression, there's all kinds of stuff here, right? But the best one. Um, is the Apple ProRes 422 especially for the whole HD business 
Um, I typically like to use Apple ProRes 422 LT. That's light. It's not as, um, the bitrate is a little lower, yes, but you really can't tell the difference between LT, the regular, and HQ. Uh, the difference you see is the file size. After it finished encoding it, the file size is, is a little lighter than the 422, the standard, or the 422 HQ. If you want to go all out and do like super high, you know, detailed, your the without any loss or whatever, um, then by all means go ahead and go through 422 HQ if you want, but just keep in mind the file size is going to be huge, right? I mean, in the end of it all, if you're going to be posting it up online, 422 LT, um, is fine, especially if you're gonna at the end of the, everything you're gonna post it to YouTube. I'm fine with this. And besides, I just shot the stuff like that was in my room. It's not like it was professionally shot. Anyways, so I'm doing uh, Apple Pro Res 422LT. I'll choose that quality. I'll make it 100%. I want the full quality. Um, at this point, you could just hit to batch, but right up here frame rate I'm gonna say 60 I don't know if that really does anything because I could leave it blank and it'll let me uh, it'll let me encode it anyways but I'm just gonna say 60 because I know that it was shot in 60 so I'll hit to batch and then I hit go and it's gonna go ahead and encode the files into the Apple ProRes it's gonna take a little bit of time. I'll come back and then I'll uh, start up Final Cut and I'll show you what it looks like in Final Cut and that it'll be nice and easy uh, for us to edit. All right, so be right back. All right, so we're back and uh, it finished encoding. So let's fire up uh, Final Cut and uh, let's take a look at where that file is, which is in my Final Cut Pro documents and render files Atrix yeah there's the file there All right so I'm gonna do a new project Oops. oh mm. new project and so what I'm gonna actually do is first set up the audio video settings and uh, under sequence presets, if I remember correctly, I did a Apple ProRes 422 LT 1280 by 720 60 frames. So I'll choose that. Sequence preset should also indicate that as well. Okay, now I can bring in my files, which are here and uh, two ways you can go about doing this you can drag and drop your file right or you can do file import files and then go to that file wherever it's at uh, right here and then choose that right so that's another way okay so if you look here We'll scroll over to the side. Here's our video file. And uh, don't worry if that says 29.97. That's from like a previous setting or some setting or whatever. Watch what happens when you drag and drop it into the sequence. Right, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna match the clip settings? So do you want the sequence to match your clip? And your clip is, you know, your clip, what it's supposed to be. And you hit yes, and it changes it, and voila. Now you're ready to edit. I'm actually not going to do any editing because I don't like editing. <laughs> and if you see most of my videos are pretty straightforward, guerrilla style, just shoot, post, and whatnot. But anyways, this is a video on uh, how to get your video files off of your DSLR. For the most part, I've, this works for many of the Canon lines um, or uh, from any any format, any camera that you use. If uh, you have the video file, use 
MPEG stream clip to batch encode all of them. Uh, just know what your resolution you're shooting at and the frame rate you're shooting at. Uh, that's best to know because you don't want to change it. Say for example you shot in um, 30 frames a second and then you encoded it in 24 and then you're just gonna now you just changed it and then trying to go back to 30 that's gonna be difficult I don't think that's even possible I don't know but that's important to know what uh, video what resolution you shot at originally try to keep everything uh, the same and uh, yeah so this should work for uh, many of the DSLRs out there I've only had experience with my own T3i and the 7D um, but I would assume like the 5D and the 60D oh actually yeah the 60D this works for that as well so um, that's pretty much it thanks for watching John of the Geek out peace